As a woman I have no country. As a woman my country is the whole world. A woman knows very well that, though a wit sends her his poems, praises her judgment, solicits her criticism, and drinks her tea, this by no means signifies that he respects her opinions, admires her understanding, or will refuse, though the rapier is denied him, to run through the body with his pen. The history of men's opposition to women's emancipation is more interesting perhaps than the story of that emancipation itself. I detest the masculine point of view. I am bored by his heroism, virtue, and honor. I think the best these men can do is not talk about themselves anymore. As long as she thinks of a man, nobody objects to a woman thinking. Women have served all these centuries as looking glasses possessing the power of reflecting the figure of man at twice its natural size. Why are women so much more interesting to men than men are to women? It is fatal to be man or woman pure and simple. One must be a woman manly or man womanly. For most of history, Anonymous was a woman. If we help an educated man's daughter to go to Cambridge are we not forcing her to think not about education but about war? Not how she can learn, but how she can fight in order that she might win the same advantages as her brothers? Lock up your libraries if you like. But there is no gate, no lock, no bolt that you can set upon the freedom of my mind. Women and fiction remain, so far as I am concerned, unsolved problems. Have you any notion how many books are written about women in the course of one year? Have you any notion how many are written by men? Are you aware that you are, perhaps, the most discussed animal in the universe? All women together ought to let flowers fall upon the tomb of Afra Ben for it was she who earned him the right to speak their minds. Suppose, for instance, that men were only represented in literature as the lovers of women, and were never the friends of men, soldiers, thinkers, dreamers, how few parts in the plays of Shakespeare could be allotted to them, how literature would suffer. We might perhaps have most of Othello, and a good deal of Antony, but no Caesar, no Brutus, no Hamlet, no Lear, no Jacques, literature would be incredibly impoverished, as indeed literature is impoverished beyond our counting by the doors that have been shut upon women. Imaginatively she is of the highest importance, practically she is completely insignificant. She pervades poetry from cover to cover, she is all but absent from history. She dominates the lives of kings and conquerors in fiction, in fact she was the slave of any boy whose parents forced a ring upon her finger. Some of the most inspired words, some of the most profound thoughts in literature fall from her lips, in real life she could hardly read, could scarcely spell, and was the property of her husband.